but he works on the railway. In 1842, from Hartlepool, I moved to Crow, found myself a job to do. Hello. A long, long time ago, I made a video. I said a long, long time ago, YouTube's only existed for me for like two years anyway, but I wasn't very good at making videos back then. But this video was, um, one, well, it still is one of my most popular videos. It's watched by a lot of people. And I've long time thought I should redo it. I played music over it and it was a mess, but I was learning. So anyway, today I am going to pretend to convert my Sorby Pro Edge to do a 4040 grind. I say pretend because obviously I've already done it. But the video was rubbish, so let's have a go at doing it. Just demonstrate better. Tools I used. An angle finder, digital angle finder. Um, I use this on my saw blades and stuff, so that's why I've got that. A angle set. Um, this one's a, an adjustable and a digital. I have lots of digital stuff because my eyes are really quite bad. So digital is easier for me than trying to read small numbers. Um, which is set to 40 degrees. 4mm and 8mm drill bit, a drill, and a pen. Now if you know the Pro Edge, you'll know they've got 15, 25, 35, 45, 60, 80 and 90 degrees on the outer circle, 20 and 30 on the inner circle. What's missing is the 40. So. This is how I found out where the 40 should be and made a hole. So I've set it to 45, put my angle finder on there, and I set that to zero. So I adjust that to 35. And my angle finder says 9.9. .9. We'll call that 10. So the difference that I want is 5. So if I turn the table up till it says 5, grab my pen because I would need that if I was doing it for real. Make a mark through the inner hole. I want it on the inner circle. And then remove my table. Now this is where, this is uh, about a 10 mil thick piece of plate. So you might want to take your, your pro edge off of its uh, table, lay it flat, if you have better access to it. Be sure you take your table off, because this is threaded and you don't want to drill through that. Now I simply drill through with a 4mm, through with an 8mm, which allows this to locate in there. So now I know that I'm halfway between 35 and 45, which is good, close enough to 40 for me. So on the inner circle, not the outer one.
So now I have a 40 degree angle for my table. So let's come to grinding the tools. At the end of this video, there is a link to um, a Stuart Batty demo of how to use the 4040. Also in there, he sharpens his on a wheel. Um, and on his table, he's marked the corners. So on my table, lining this one up with the edge along here, sorry, this edge along here, I'm going to draw myself a 40, 40 degree line, same the other direction. Then I'm going to colour in this bit just because I can. And again, I'm not doing this for real. I've already done it. So you can see that there's already evidence I've already done this. But let's get back to the pro edge. Hopefully you've all seen on YouTube from Robert Sorby how they cut a horseshoe on uh, the front edge and then sharpen to that to get their angle set that's how you repair a chisel that's gone out of sync um, this is a standard 45 fingernail grind and they use the block to line it up square um, I find that a bit over the kill. So I just draw some lines on my table so I've got something to guide me. And Nearly there, doesn't it? It's not far away. It's actually a 120 grit belt, and as you can see. Hopefully you can see. I've ground uh, a wide flat on there, a horseshoe shape, and it's slightly off at the moment. Let's square that a little bit more. That's better. It's now an even horseshoe shape all the way around. The same as when you're doing a fingernail grind. The advice is you start on one wing and work your way to the other. So I'm going to line it up with that 40 degree mark. And as I swing it around, I'm going to ro rotate it. Effectively parallel to the, to the shape of the, the flute.
It's about halfway there at the moment, but I'm going to go to the other side. I don't want the tool to get too hot. It won't hurt the tool, but it hurt my fingers. So all you got to do is keep uh, keep working until that horseshoe is gone and you're back to a sharp edge. Pause every now and then. When it gets warm, don't get uncomfortable. If it gets too warm to touch comfortably, turn the machine off. Come back in a minute. Which it is now quite warm, so I will turn the machine off and I'll come back in a minute. Put you on pause while I'm doing that. Okay, well, while you were on pause, I had a cup of coffee, I let the tool cool now, down. People say to me, and I finish up, why do you do it by hand um, when you've got a jig? The fingernail jig doesn't really work for this. Um, the reason I started doing it by hand was simply because I was using an old tool that was very short and I was playing around. Now, it didn't fit the jig anymore, so I did it by hand. If you watch Stuart on the, the wheel, it's very easy. Just follow that par parabolic curve as you swing it around to 90 degrees. And it's very easy to do. It's good practice as well. However, I've just been playing. I'm putting a bit of marker pen on the bevel. Um, if I switch to this camera, you might see that a bit better. Put a bit of marker pen on the bevel and then just uh, touch it against the belt and, and move it up and down until I got the marker pen move, removed cleanly top to bottom of the grind. And I've only got that much protrusion. Now that won't work. You could adjust this jig to um, a different angle. And if you've got the older one with the screws on it, sorry, I'm trying to, struggling to keep it in the camera. If you've got the older one with the screws in it, then you can adjust the the length of the jig. Um, if you're going to do that, I would advise you go out and buy another jig um, so that you can adjust it and leave it where you've got it right. But as I said, I do it by hand because it's easy. Anyway, hopefully this video will be a little bit clearer, a little bit better than the last video. I'm going to finish it off by putting a bowl on the lathe, turn a bowl with a 40-40 at high speed, and then advise you to go and watch Stuart do it properly because he does it so much better than me. Um, thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up if you're not subscribed. Love it if you subscribe to my channel. It's nice to have new subscribers. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers for now. Everything's all right.
Everything's alright. 